So you've decided to follow the crowd and be different, and you want to do .NET development on a Mac. But how are you going to access your data? Now, I already have a video on how to set up your .NET environment somewhere. Just click. It's there. It's probably there. You don't know where it's not. But how do you access your data? SQL Server is probably what you're using if you're doing .NET development. There's not a SQL Server for the Mac. So how are you going to access your data? We're going to look at three programs that are native to Mac that will allow you to access SQL Server. Two of them are paid and one of them is free. Our three contestants are dBeaver, that is our free open source software version, DataGrip, this is a paid application by JetBrains, and SQL Pro Studio. This is also a paid version, but it's made by a solo developer. And this was actually the first one I used. Um, so, I, you know, a little nostalgia. We'll, we'll see how it stacks up. Now we're gonna look at four criteria that I didn't just make up just now, but those four criteria are cost, who gets the money, ease of use, and cross-platform, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, I will say, even though we're talking about SQL Server, all three of these are multi-database available. I don't know. They, they, work on multi they work on multiple database types. So whatever you're working on, you can use one of these three for whatever it is. Let's first get down to cost. Now, first is dBeaver. dBeaver is free, open source software. Free is an open and free is in beer or root beer if you're not 21. Big plus on the cost side, right off the bat. For SQL Pro Studio, SQL Pro Studio, like I said, was built by an independent developer. There's three ways you can buy it. You can pay monthly, you know, if you want to. You can pay yearly, or you can buy a lifetime license. Now I bought a lifetime license for this, $219, Forever, you know, it's not terrible. Uh, $99 a year if you want to try it. If you want to try it out, $15.99 a month. Now, what I will say about this one, and this is the only one of the three, they do have a iPad version of this. Uh, the iPad version of it is a subscription. You know, uh, the the one thing I will say is I'll, I'll give cut him a little bit of slack. He's an independent developer. He's trying to support him and his family off of this. You know, so up. Uh, it is what it is. All right, let's talk about data grip. So data grip by itself, $99 for the first year. The, the way the way JetBrains does it is it's a higher price in the first year, a little lower on the second, and then every year after that, it's a little cheaper. So with, with data grip by itself for an individual developer, it is $99 for the first year, then 79, then 59 every year after that. But if you are a .NET developer, you probably, and if you're not, you should be using .NET Writer. So if we look at .NET Writer, 149 for the first year, 119, 89 after that. So if you're looking at 250 for both, I ended up just paying for the full product pack because it gives me those two plus everything else. And you know, you dabble with stuff here and there, so occasionally use it. Mostly I don't use them. Mostly I just use Writer and and data grip, and I should probably pay less for it, but I, that's what I do, so that's what it is. So how do they stack up? Free for dBeaver, $99 a year or 218 for a lifetime subscription for SQL Pro Studio, or $99 for the first year, down to $59 every year after that, or 250 for that and Rider, or 289 for all three. Now I can understand if you are just starting out, you can't justify the cost. Maybe you can get your uh, company to purchase it. Maybe you can figure out some way to write it off. That doesn't make it free, so I don't know why that why that's even an option. But those are your three options cost-wise. So now let's talk about briefly, briefly, who gets the money? DBeaver? Nobody. Nobody gets the money. So unless you unless you donate to support DBeaver, there's nobody's getting the money. SQL Pro Studio. You're supporting an independent developer, and you know honestly, don't we don't we all kind of wish we could be independent developers? So not bad, not bad. JetBrains, yeah, it's a company, but they're not a bad company. They they make awesome products for for um, for Mac, especially they are cross platform. Um, I don't have a lot of problems with them. I've been actually pretty happy with it. So 
Who gets the money? You know, for me, it's a wash. All right, now let's talk about ease of use. So to test this out, we're gonna look at each one. I'm gonna create a database. Well, first I'm gonna connect to the server. I'm gonna create a database and we're gonna run some queries. So let's start with dbgr. So first to connect to the server. Now, how, how am I running SQL Server on a Mac? I'm just running it through Docker. Um, if, if, if you need a tutorial on how to do that, let me know, maybe I'll make one. Uh, so let's look at this. So, so what I like to do, how I like to start using software is not read any directions and just look at it and see if I can figure out what the heck I'm supposed to do. Um, because I'm a developer, I don't read directions. Who reads directions? So let's look at this. Uh, so we got connection. Okay, so we'll do SQL Server. This is on a local host. Copy my super secret password. Finish. All right, we're connected. Let's go ahead and create a database. So again, I, I'm just kind of making guesses as to what I should do. So in my mind, nothing up here screams create a database. So I right click, okay, create a database, simple enough. Let's call it db for db. Let's expand that schemas, dbo. Now, uh, if, if we make a comparison to SQL Server, it's gonna ask you, uh, you, you can set like what user, you can set the permissions, you can do all that kind of stuff. So this one is just def defaulting some stuff. And honestly, all of them that we're looking at, they kind of make those same judgments and defaults on their own. So, so nothing bad there. All right, tables, create new table. Now, here's where it gets a little confusing. Like I look at this, okay, new table name, users. Okay, columns, there's no columns, unique keys. I'm not seeing an add button. If I hover over these, view columns, Okay, create new column. I wouldn't know to look there. It doesn't, like what, what, what in that, you know, this is nitpick. I mean, it doesn't tell me to do anything. Let's try something else too. Okay, I can right click in here, create new column. So I can, I can click this obscure button that gives no indication. I can right click. So let's create a column. Let's call it ID. Let's make it an integer. Uh, now you notice this this defaults to 100, but it doesn't really go away. Like it doesn't really change based off of what uh, value I've put in there. So that could be confusing for somebody new. Not null identity. Okay, Let's create a column. We'll call it email bar char 100. Sure, not null. Uh, now. Let's try an index. So let's say date added, date time, not null. All right, we got a simple database here. Indexes, no indexes. So I assume we can right click, new index from selection. Uh, doesn't seem like it gives you a way to title it. it just kind of gives you some basic options. Okay. You know, pretty standard naming convention, but unless I missed something, it didn't allow me to change it. So same thing, right click, create foreign key. Is there a thing down here to create a foreign key? No. Create foreign key. So these aren't really obvious down here. Um, it was only when I right click that I realized how you actually do this. Of course, I'm very aware of how to use dbeaver. This isn't the first time I've ever opened it. You don't know that you can't prove it. Um, so just looking at it, it, it's not terrible. It didn't take me long to figure out how to do things in it. Uh, so let's save our database or let's save our new table and let's try to query something. Okay. You know, somebody's gonna get mad if I don't capitalize this. All right. Execute a new tab. I might wanna do that. 
execute SQL script, execute SQL query. So I'm guessing this executes the whole thing. This executes just the line. All right, nothing in there. Got some autocomplete going on sometimes. All right, so if I click this, what happens? All right, it seems like it just executed the one. If I select this, does it? If I just have the cursor at the end, does it? All right. Execute script. Okay. Some of them will complain about not having something like that there. So executed the whole thing there. Unpin tab results. Oh, is it just oh look at this. It's just making a new that's kind of annoying. I may have to constantly close these. Okay, I'm not sure why it does that, but mm -hmm. so not bad overall. I mean, not the greatest uh, user interface, but let's, I'm not a user interface expert. I figured it out pretty quickly. I was able to make what I needed to. It had stuff for foreign keys, so I could I could do all my all my um, connections in the database there. You know, not bad, not bad. I can see here what other stuff I have. No stored procedures, no triggers. But I do have access to, to all of this stuff. So, you know, not bad for a free solution. Um, it's not bad. I, I would work with this. I would definitely work with this. SQL, SQL Pro Studio. All right. New connection. SQL Server. Local host. Super secret password, save. Okay, we're connected. I see dbver. Database tree. Okay, can I make a new database? Okay, create database. All right, SQL Pro DB. Okay, we got our database here. So again, you know, if I'm giving it the same criteria, there's no buttons up here. Now this is good and bad. Um, there's very few buttons to click on, whereas dBeaver, there were a lot of buttons. So there was a button that did what I wanted to in dBeaver, but it was so clustered with other stuff that it was not obvious what to do. Now here there's no buttons. So my first instinct is to simply right click and see what happens. So new table, users, Okay, new column, ID, ints, okay, is identity, not null, so I guess we click here, email, archar. Now this is closer to what you would see in SQL Server, so in one way that's a little easier so not null, date added, date time. I can set a default if I want. Does it take, does it take that? Okay, indexes. I can add an index with a name. It hasn't saved them yet. Okay, so let's let's do that afterwards. Let's see if it let's see if it likes that or if it gets choked up on that. Okay, it took it. 
we got our table. Okay, here I can see my indexes. Um, keys, I'm guessing this is foreign keys. Triggers, okay, so you, you can see everything you could on the other one. All right, now, new query. Okay, that, that is a little simpler to me. Select all from users. Okay, nothing in there. Doesn't seem like it has autocomplete. Let's try not. Let's see if it took our. Okay, now let's just see. I see a run all. So if I select something, run selected. Now, I, I don't actually hate that. This automatically changed based off of what I wanted to do. So it, one button for run all, I you know, I kind of like that. So if I run this, okay, it does what I expected. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and go back in here. Alter table. So let's try adding a column. I know my naming convention. Okay, not too bad. How would I add a foreign key? Okay, there we go, indexes. Can you add foreign keys on here? Foreign keys, okay. Okay, not, not super obvious that that's how you would do it, but there was a way, triggers, indexes, okay. So this one is more um, minimalist. This one seems like it was built for the Mac, um, which, which it actually was. Um, and it kind of takes some cues from Mac software, very minimal, um, kind of does what it thinks you want it to do at the time. Uh, you know, I don't hate it. And I, I didn't hate it seven years ago when I bought it and there was not much other choice. So, you know, I still kind of like it. There, there are some things about it that I don't like. There's some reasons that I don't use it as much anymore, but really I don't hate the fact that I bought it. It, it does really well. You're helping a, you're helping a, um, an individual developer make a living from writing software. You know, you could do a lot worse. I've wasted more money on worse things. Now, data grip, data grip. This is the one I currently use the most. There are some things that I like about it a lot. And there are other things that I still completely don't understand. All right, so let's see. We got a plus sign, that's a good thing. Data source, let's go to data source. Uh, SQL server. Local host. Let's see if our super secret password is still in there. Okay, we connected. I see the master database. So if I select on it, I see the plus. See, I like the plus. The plus is obvious. It I don't I, I like that about it because it's a universal, like with the DB for one, there was this weird button at the bottom that it was no indication that that's what I should click on. Okay, so this is one of the things that I like about data grip. It is a little complex, but it gives you access to a lot of different stuff. Only like a quarter of which I actually use, but it is there should I want it. So we don't want a new data source. Okay, so nothing is popping out at me that I need to make a new database. So new database, all right. Data grip DB. Yes, no, maybe, did it create it? Did it create it? It did, but it didn't automatically add it. Okay, just like that. 
Okay, data group DB, DBO. Now you notice all of the other ones hid these. This one just shows you all of them. And, and I feel like you're gonna see this a lot where this one will give you access to a lot of stuff even if you're not gonna use it, it's there. Um, and you can mostly ignore what you, what you don't like. Uh, so DBO, let's make a new table. Users, so click on the plus sign, gives me stuff to add. If I click here, nope, don't wanna grant anything. Okay, so columns, new column or, or do it that way. ID, not null, identity. So creating the tables is mostly the same on all of them largely. Some autocomplete, I see. Now the, here's where, now here's another thing that the other ones didn't give us. Like this is, it, it's giving us warnings. Like it wouldn't have let me move past that without an error on that. I like the autocomplete. Not no. Now I, I like the other thing I like about this one is everything is right in front of you and and mostly obvious keys, foreign keys. Some of the other stuff on the other one was kind of hidden, like it wasn't really obvious where you went for it. I mean, obviously we found it on all of them. So you can these are kind of nitpicky things. Re realistically, you could use any one of these three on a daily basis and it'd get the job done. Certain things are annoying, certain things are better, but largely, you know. New index. So here, not necessarily immediately obvious, but I see columns, I see a plus sign. So I think, okay, I must, I must have to do this. Now, this is nice. It saved the name of it before I saved the data, before I saved the table where the other one didn't. So we got our column there. I, I also like the way foreign keys work on here. Uh, so DVO, now why isn't this? You know, again, are we, did I create it in the wrong place? Where did our table go? I gotta say, I, I use this all the time, and so I'm not entirely sure what happened. Okay, there's already a user. Where Where is it? Well, this is embarrassing. This has never happened to me before. I don't know uh, what to tell you. I did create this, it is telling me that it is there because it won't let me create a second one. And yet, and yet, where is it? All schemes, let's try this. Let's remove all schemes, just DBO. So, I don't know, I use this almost, I use this on a daily basis. I don't know what happened here. Maybe it's something to do with my Docker database installation. Normally I'm connecting to another server. I don't know what to tell you here. For the sake of uh, continuing, uh, I'm gonna query a different database. So I like the autocomplete there. Let's say, like test. Now, here's, here's one thing Here's one way that I, I like some of the other ones better. Now I can run this query. Now there's only one button here. So I, I see all of my, my results. Now here's one thing I don't like. Here's one thing I don't like. If I want to run multiple queries, uh, two things that it does. If you run multiple queries in SQL Server, it'll like stack the results and split them. Um, so two things that happen here, let's 
toy with this guy here. Let's change that. So I, I really like the autocomplete on this. I really feel like this has the best autocomplete out of all of them. Now here's the other thing. You'll notice that it makes this green box around here. So if I run this, it's going to run the line or the box that is selected. I don't know what's going to ask me. Yeah, OK. OK, so here's why it doesn't like it. Um, it doesn't like it because I don't have that behind it. So this one gets a little pickier. No, oh, so you let me do that. So I got to highlight it. I have to highlight to run the one that I want. Now here's something else I don't like about it. Every other, every other program will just tell me right here, but this one has this little output tab. So I got to click over to here to see what happened with it. I dislike that. Um, and then here, if I want to run both of these, if if I take this out and just run it like this, oh, it did accept it. So it did accept it, but I can't see the results in one place. I got to look over here, and then I got to go over here. Same thing, if I do, if I do this, and I want to run two queries, It gives them to me in two different tabs. Uh, the reason I dislike that is because if I'm running two queries like that, it's because I want to see them at the same time. I want to compare them. I want to look at them. And I don't think there is a way. Yeah, there's. People talking. So there's, there's not really a good way to look at both of these together, which I, I really dislike. Um, but obviously, I use it, so it's not enough to make me stop using it. Overall, this one feels the most polished. Uh, like I said, you could get away with any of these three. They are all good, and there's things to like about all of them. If you really like the Mac aesthetic, then SQL Pro Studio, you're, you're supporting an independent developer. It works nicely. It gives you what you need. It's mostly intuitive to use. Not a bad option. If you need free, if you need free, um, or you're just cheap, dBeaver, it does what it needs to do. It looks like open source software. That's not really a knock. You know, I can't, I can't design an interface, so. Uh, um, but it does what you need to do, and it's free. Um, or if you want the beefiest thing that'll let you do everything you want to do, except for apparently. Uh, see a user table on a test database you just created, uh, data grip. Um, and I just, I really like how data grip lays everything out. I, I have everything at my fingertips, even if I don't know what, it, what three quarters of it does, it's there for me if I want it. Um, so ultimately I mostly use, uh, data grip currently. Um, but that's just because I didn't really know about dBeaver. Maybe if I tried dBeaver first, I would still be using it but I didn't, and here we are. So three options. Um, you can see their score here. There's no score. That's, that's it. You just pick the one you want. But these are three options. I think you could get away with any one of them. They'll do what you need to do. It's light years ahead of where it was five years ago working with SQL Server. So, you know, there it is.